Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn -turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's servers so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride-sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store or go to GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com. You know, it's it's either chocolate or vanilla. It's it's either, you know, the the Raiders <laughs> or the 49ers. It's either this or that. It's West Coast, East Coast. It's it's either Tupac or, or Ice Cube. It's, this is dumb, guys. <laughs> We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery, statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello. Everybody and welcome to the 133rd episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information Especially about you, this Tasmania. at BIPCOT.org. Yes, we were missing that last week and the voice you hear, that's Dave. Yes, I, I'm Jeremy and Dave has joined us this week. He decided to grace us with his presence. I uh, thoroughly apologize Remember about what, what happened last he was week, on. boys. Uh, it's all right, Dave. Uh, I thought it was Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Uh, Andre is not with us tonight, although he, you know, was nice enough to warn us in advance of not he showing up. He was not a show. no call, no show. <laughs> so that was awesome. So Andre gets <laughs> points this week. Dave loses a lot. Anyway, in Andre's place, we actually have uh, two guest hosts tonight, a couple of returning guests and friends of the show, Mr. Jason Booth, who is the most recent, uh, I guess, co-host of the Vanu podcast. What's up, Jason? Mm -hmm. What is up, you guys? How you guys doing tonight? Hanging Just in there, man. Hanging in there. Blessed to have Jason and uh, Van yes. Landingham on yes. the show, you know? Uh, and also... Booth and Van Landingham I didn't even get spot? to introduce him yet, Dave. You're ruining everything. See, what oh, did I tell shit, you guys before the show? Everything. It's so much calmer when Dave's not here. <laughs> and also joining <laughs> I ruin us tonight, everything. as Dave has already tried to ruin, is our friend Merrick Van Landingham from, well, kind of from the Radical Logic podcast. They're as close to pod fading as you can get without actually doing it. But I refuse to give up hope. One day, the Radical Logic podcast will return. I have faith. What's up, brother? Hello, my friends. How are we doing? Oh, he also comes. It's from it's the, not uh, pod fading. It, it's really not. Um, it it it, it lives. It, it's in a dormant state, oh. but it lives. <laughs> oh, it's pupating. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, not not that I have time to listen to as many podcasts as I used to. Anyway, I'm already so far behind. But you know, back in the day when I was walking dogs all day long, I could listen to six, eight hours of podcasting a day. I had no problem keeping up with it. Now I understand what all you normal folks were talking about when you're like, I don't know how you listen to podcasts. I'm lucky if I get one in a day and I'm like, oh, now I see what they mean. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I have no time. Like I have to I'm talking to other people. So like I have I usually listen to ours just so I can cringe at how stupid I am. But, you know, hey, yeah, the struggle that's is about real. all I have time for. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, you know. Uh, yeah, because we were talking like uh, before the before the show about our our friend and hopeful hopeful guest for next week, Nick Hazelton, uh, was recently on the, the uh, unregistered podcast with Thaddeus Russell. None of us knew it because Nick didn't tell anybody until it came out. And it's just like, hey, you're on like a really big podcast now, and I want to go listen to it, but I'm still so far behind. You know, I think I oh I, I, I listened to it today. It was fantastic. 
And and the funny thing is, I was actually chatting with him back and forth when I found out that it was on there. And I'm like, ah, you little shit, man. You don't even say anything. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to listen yeah. to that one. So, so humble. Oh, it's, it's really good. It's really good. I try, I try to give everybody their due, especially I, I love, I mean, I love Thaddeus's podcast. I've been a big fan of it ever since it came out, but I'm still like, I try to, I try to go in order, even though you don't have to, but I think I just, I, I still haven't listened to the Scott Horton one from last week. So I got to, Oh, up. you need to do that. I, I, I love, I will, I will believe me. I will. I just, I, I listened to the one that was just before, just before at the uh, Mexican journalist. I can't remember his name now. The guy, it was a really interesting interview, but yeah, I just listened to that one today. So yeah, I, uh, I like I like Thaddeus a lot uh, simply because I disagree with him on so many things. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that that he. But he's really not afraid made... to debate. Oh because, no no no! Uh, he's very honest. He's from very his honest. Facebook yet he's still my friend, so like that's how I know. Yeah, and and I find a great deal of value in that and in, in challenging my own ideals. So I, I enjoy it. I enjoy listening to him. Well, I like uh, feather rufflers, or you know. <laughs> And he's one of those people. Oh, he's definitely one of them. I mean, I I, be, I became a fan of his with his when I stumbled across his book, which I still haven't finished completely. I read most of it. I want to go back and reread it again. The uh, Renegade. Which history. one? The first. The, the first one. The Renegade History of the United States. Renegade History. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. Yeah. That's that's yeah, where I first. Renegade history. Yeah. That's where I first became aware of him, and then I heard you know I heard him on I heard him on School of Socks, and it was it was kind of the same thing. It was like. I disagree with this guy, but I'm like drawn to him. You know, it was like this weird thing that normally oh, people he's like, funny too. You know, yeah, but normally people like that that I disagree that vehemently, vehemently with things normally uh, turn me off to, in a certain manner. Like I'll just tune them out to Here's a certain what it is. extent. But he's a. Uh, but he's also he's like he is very, he's a very honest guy, and I, I like listening to him, especially the podcast he does with uh, Brett Vinat these days, the two of them have become closer, and you know he talks about the fact like at all these events that he's that they're putting on now across the country you know, the weekends with Thaddeus Russell, how his mind gets changed on things, you know, because he's not, mm-hmm. he's he's not very static on a lot of stuff. He's just kind of, he's very fluid with everything. Well, he's just like, this yeah, my is mind what I was change. about to this say. This is why he's so likable is because he, you may disagree with him, but he's not a shill for his idea. You know what I'm saying? He's not completely shilled out. And some people are just completely blind, even to their own ideas. And it's just like, at least you can't he can examine him because I've seen him I've seen him morph over like four years because I've been friends with him for like four years on Facebook. So like I've just seen him change. Like I've seen what he said, what he's saying. I've seen it all change. And it's it's really cool to see see that. I love that. I love people's people that change their minds, you know. That's like that's our main goal. <laughs> that's what we well, do is try to find those people. I know that's well, what I- Jason does. Yeah, I, I place, and I don't want to take over the mic here, but I, I place a lot of value in <clears throat> people who disagree with me, and and I love the debate, uh, as long as it's an honest debate. And and we've all talked about this before, but just to, to rehash it and, and talking about Thaddeus Russell and people like him, he's being honest. He, he states his case uh, based on his beliefs as strongly as he can and then finishes up with something like, is that right? And then you have the mm-hmm. floor to to hash it out. You know, I've said this a million times on your podcast and mine and all over the place that the 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 path to the truth is through the runs right through the clash of ideals. Mm-hmm. And if we don't hash those things out, if we just stay, I had a guy yesterday that was accusing me of living in a, an echo chamber, and I said, well, no, that's not really how that works. Well, first off, he started off, and I'm sure you guys have all heard this, because you, 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 all of you, I know, I see you, uh, participate in discourse on social media. Mm-hmm. And this guy said that I was preaching to the choir. How many times have you heard that? Oh, you're just preaching to the <laughs> choir, and that, and he said that that's a waste of time. It'll get you nowhere. And I, I, I thought about that, and I that's, said, he well. He doesn't get that. He doesn't get <clears throat> propaganda, but keep going. Right. And I said, all right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's back this up just a step because we always want to start the story in the, at the beginning, not in the middle. Um, when was the last time, if you're a church going person, I'm not, but I grew up in a church, that you go to the church and the, the choir singing and everything, and then the pastor gets up and, and goes to the dais, and then he, he excuses the choir so they can go away because they don't need to hear what he's going to say. 
You see, that doesn't happen. That's not the way this works. Yes, we do preach to the people who are not within the flock and the congregation, but I'm using the very bad uh, church analogy here, but, but we also do preach to the congregation and to the choir and to the piano player. I mean, you know, you just do. And then we, we can look at those things and say, well, you know, I don't know. What about this? I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. And then they don't if we can have an honest debate, either. a rational debate about these things and clash the ideas together and then let it fall to the floor and see what comes, you know, wh what rises up from the ashes. Well, that's how we figure out where we're wrong, because we do understand, right, that a lot of the things that we say may not necessarily be correct. If you would have talked to me five years ago and I would have been talking to you about all the studies that I've done on constitutional, you know, history, you would tear mm -hmm. it apart and I would have been defensive about it. But I had to open my mind. So anyway, sorry. But that's why I like people like that. People like Thaddeus Russell, people like uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson and so on. People like Michael Malice who get up there and just say exactly what they think. I'm like, man, I appreciate that. Oh, I, I agree completely, Merrick. Uh, I love people that disagree with me because it causes me to challenge my own beliefs. Uh, Aristotle said that it's the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain an idea without accepting, without accepting it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one right. of my favorite and, quotes ever from Aristotle. Right, and and if if you can engage and so, engage with somebody that completely disagrees with you, and see their point of view and see their thinking behind it, and be able to use that to strengthen your argument or to lead them in a direction towards a more correct answer or more correct opinion. Mm -hmm. You can do that all day long and changing minds, you know, like you're like <coughs> flipping bottle caps. Yeah, but, that's exactly yeah. correct. It would be, because, all right, I know that all of you guys, Jason, I know you have, and, and uh, all of you have studied the art of debate and how do you debate mm -hmm. somebody if you're trying to change their mind, if you're trying to ch not change their mind, change their perspective is more accurate is that for the first thing that you do is you find common ground. So you, yep. it, when they give you a counterpoint that you may not agree with, you'll find something that you do agree with uh, on, on the issue, and you say, okay, well, you accept that point A is true, correct? And they go, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Okay, th uh, so therefore, how about this? And it, instead of you just shooting them down, over and over again, they you know point counterpoint point counterpoint. That's a really sloppy well, way to, to people, debate. You know, well, yeah, it works on people that are mental midgets. You know that, yeah. that are that are really not operating from a from a position of strength in their conviction. Uh, but if you have somebody who is strong in their conviction, you can find the common ground, mm -hmm. find where you do agree, and then you start from there. Yeah. Well, well what, what I'm what is some people's what minds are talking from about debate. Well, in, in a debate, no, but in a discussion, yes. What Merrick's talking about is finding the keystone, right? Whenever you do any mm -hmm. sort of foundation or any sort of construction, you have to start with, with one solid point and then grow from that. If you can find that keystone issue that you agree with a person yeah. that, they're, that they're correct on, and then you can build the foundation based on that point, then then it's it's endless. I mean, you, you, can, you can really create something in a way that this person can see you, what you're saying and can can lead themselves in a, in a positive direction. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And and obviously you have a very firm understanding of it, but it's just the way if you're sitting around the dinner table at Thanksgiving and politics comes up and everybody has a different opinion, well, if you just start arguing, it's what is it going to turn into? It's going to turn into a shit show of, of a shout fest. <laughs> and, yeah, and then, then you're... Yeah, and then you're cleaning cornbread stuffing out of your ear, and your grandma has <laughs> green beans in her in her wig, and yeah, I don't that's know about y'all, but I call that a good night. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that that's not fun too, and we all do that. We troll people online, and we we do all of those things, but when we're trying to be honest and actually trying to get to something, I can I can go into a, a debate with an art an anarcho communist, which I have done several times and just spend my time trying to find common ground with them which is uh, that's difficult but i'm taking the the the, the uh, diametrically opposed you know furthest view that i can from mine all right and still be able to 
say, all right, well, there's got to be something that we agree on. And that doesn't come easy. You have to really listen to a lot of voices that you don't agree with. And, and I'm, I know I'm taking this way off the rails, but that's what I, I had do. To, you uh, guys know me. I had to find something to support you, I, what you were saying. I, I remember a post I made on Facebook it was on August 19th, 2016. It says, you can never make someone see the light. Why do you say that, Dave? Because the light is invisible to the other person. You first have to find out how, imp- how, how the light affects what they deem is important. Okay. Did anyone get that? No, I, I get it, but that, that's exactly what it is. You're speaking to them and not speaking down to them. You, you have to treat them as an equal, and you have to be respectful. You've got to drag to them. them to your corner. Well, you have to be respectful to their ideas as well, even if you so disagree with them. Uh, just like Jason you. said that with the, the Aristotelian <laughs> quote. I'm sorry, I missed that, Jeremy. What was that? I'm just making jokes, man. Continue. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, here I am being all serious. I'm sitting in a dark room with my eyes closed. So it, it just seems that this level of discourse is not productive for anybody. Nobody's learning. It's, it's, it's driving a wedge in between people who otherwise, if you put them together in a room by themselves, would probably have more in common than not in common. And yet these polarization little tidbits are are driving them apart and they they get stuck on it okay it's like a skipping record they they really get stuck and and i don't think that that's good for either party uh that's what ends up you know with this left right divisiveness that as we all know is completely pointless it's counterproductive it's dangerous it's murderous and but that's how you get to that 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 is the base of tribalism and you know, when you guys asked me what what would I like to talk about tonight, well, that's what's been stuck in my mind a little bit is that you know you guys not you but you guys are stuck on stupid. You know, it's it's either chocolate or vanilla. It's it's either you know the the Raiders <laughs> or the Forty ers It's either this or that. It's West Coast East Coast. It's it's either two pack or or Ice Cube. It's this is dumb, guys. <laughs> you said it's either chocolate or vanilla. I'm lactose intolerant. I don't want any fucking ice cream. <laughs> okay. Well, then you know what? Get the uh, fuck off of my lawn. I just triggered a vegan. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just no dairy. Just no dairy. Um, but uh, uh, uh go, going back to your point, like an angry mind is a closed mind, right? If, if you're if you're arguing with somebody, or if, if you create divisiveness between them, if you approach a, a subject in an angry aggressive manner or if you as you said if you trigger somebody they're not going to want to listen to you there, there's there's so there's no real point in trying to talk to people from a point of aggression and and, and anger you're, you're not going to get anywhere you're just going to spin your wheels and piss yourself off oh that's correct mm-hmm. uh, that reminds me of an old phrase this, and this is going back this phrase is probably hundreds of years old but it's uh, those convinced against their will or of the same opinion still yes I love that one mm-hmm. and yeah. and it's true you can get somebody you can beat somebody into submission pretty easily if you're good at debate uh, to the point that they just give up and they're like yeah you know what whatever you're right I don't care yeah <laughs> and then they go away and th- their mind is not changed all you've done is made a mad nope Sure. Well, mm-hmm. that's the thing. I don't, I mean, not only, it, I mean, at least what I see, I mean, we've talked about this off and on over the years and I've gone through stretches where I've, I've tried to almost ignore these facts, I guess, that we're talking about of what the, like the evidence we see in front of us and try to ignore it and try to, you know, work, try to, try to, you know, back to like changing people's minds and stuff like, like that mindset and try to be in that. And, and then I get discouraged because I see, you know, every couple of months I step back and realize, no, it's really not changing because, it's not only that people are so uh, have a difficulty having their minds changed. Uh, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people, even with our in our own communities anymore, really necessarily want to change anybody else's mind. Like that's not the intent. That there is no in, there. Like there's there's not even there's not even that intent in people's minds. They don't care. They just want to scream at each other. They don't want. They they want. They want to be able to berate, berate people till they say fine whatever and walk away they like that seems to be they want to find the crabs 
that they agree with that are in the market. Yeah, you know, because you mentioned the echo chamber thing earlier, Merrick, and I know, you know, all, I mean, I'm sure all of us, I know I have too, been accused of being in that too, and that's why I try to... Well, we're all trying to find our tribe, you know? And well, that's, it's kind of yeah, hard but to, to weed but, people out that you can trust. Yeah, but when it comes to... Especially with... Yeah, but, but when it comes to like echo chambers, like normally that's like the general idea of that is like the same type of ideology type thing like that that type of thing and i'm i've stepped f even further out of that like that's where i you know we started talking we started this off talking about you know thaddeus russell and the, like talking about people like that that have differing of opinions and merrick you actually took it mm -hmm. to, down a path that i didn't i wasn't really thinking of because my my first thought about that was just like because i th i think in a lot of the same ways that, that you do that you were referring to him but like people like him and people like brian sovereign but uh, for me, it's not about even wanting to change their minds or having them change mine. It's just having the ability to have a civil conversation about these differences of opinions. And even if we both walk away at the end, like, yeah, okay, I still feel the same way. Like, at least the ideas got out there and we didn't end up screaming at each other and calling each other names. Like, I, I stumbled into this t t today on a post because somebody was really upset about net neutrality being taken away. You know, obviously all the memes out there and all the jokes about people about, hey, you remember like oh, way back when, like, you know, three years ago when this didn't exist and the world wasn't collapsing like people forget about that and that was actually a thought that struck me today is like that whole thing is a great and it you know it ties into this whole like the black and white stuff that you were talking about Merrick is that people are it, like that like just that that take that particular instance the way people are freaking out about net neutrality it like to me it highlights the uh, not only that that divisiveness that we're talking about but also the uh, like the goldfish mentality Residual so left and right well no yeah but it's just but I'm talking about I'm talking about everybody well, not just not just like political yeah but yeah like just, Democrat versus Republican. Yeah, I'm but I'm just, it's, there. it's this, uh, you can tell who's the left leftover Democrats and who are the leftover Republicans in the libertarian. Movement but uh, yeah, but I'm, again, I'm okay. But Dave, Dave, again, I'm not talking about Dave, on Jesus Christ, action. Dave, shut up. I'm not talking about that for the love of God, man. I am talking about oh, everybody in bad. general. I'm not even talking about it in our community. It's just the fact that people, uh, oh, well, it's like this that. goldfish mentality that people have that people's, uh, attention spans really are that short that they can't remember like two or three years ago before you know net neutrality was introduced how these things weren't happening but people are so wound up and so looking to be uh you know like you know jason was saying well, like the aggressive speech like everybody's on edge and expecting a fight with everybody it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter what you identify as democrat republican libertarian anarchist whatever most people out there are just assuming they're going to go into battle whether it's you know you know verbal for the most part but for a lot of people that's that replaces physicality for them because again they can go online and do it and hide behind that you know that certain amount of anonymity even if you are using your name and stuff like that you know it's like there's that in, you know wall between you because you're not face to face you know you guys mentioned that earlier about the whole if people were in the room together it would be a lot different yeah it would be but that's not the way it works these days unfortunately you know we live in the the, the twitter and memeverse where everything happens constantly and people are constantly immersed in social media rather being immersed in life which you know leads to a lot of these problems too but i don't know it just it like i said i that's what i was thinking earlier today so i, I was just trying to i, I think that kind of ties in too that it's just well, uh, go ahead sorry no i'm i'm sorry i'd jump in that's what i do guys uh that's a very salient point and and i think that that ties everything into a nice little bow really when you think about it because the way i see it is when i'm debating somebody if it's on a a, a very fundamental issue let's say if it's government or if it's peaceful parenting or if it's you know homeschooling or any of those things that i'm uh very passionate about i i'm gonna tie this back in i'm gonna take the point that you ran with and tie it back into my initial point about perspective that whether or not i change that person's mind is largely irrelevant because i understand that we all have things that are within our spheres of of uh, influence uh, in our spheres of control and whether I would jump up and down and pull my hair out and gnash my teeth uh, to get somebody to vote for John McCain, that, which I would never do, but just as an analogy uh, or Barack Obama or p uh, pick your favorite tyrant, um, it doesn't matter. So whether I change their mind or not really is kind of insignificant other than 
can I change the way that they're thinking about things? I'm not trying to convince you that you need to be an anarchist and you need to vacate the state and that all of these people are horrible and that you need to take control of your life and you need to learn skills and you need to do, you need to, I'm going to prescribe learn what your life, avoidance. I'm going to, I'm going to prescribe what your life should be to you is, is largely irrelevant to me. <clears throat> you can do whatever in the hell you want. Uh, it's just that I want the ideas to be able to freely flow. And now when we take it to that level of what we do on social media, where it's tit for tat, point to counterpoint. Um, now, when I, when I do that, and I do sometimes trolling, I'm not speaking to the person. I'm speaking to the audience. And, mm -hmm. and you should always keep that in mind in, in any debate, that you're not speaking to the person. You're, try, you're not trying to convince the person. You're trying to convince the audience. Uh, but you, all we're trying to do really is to give them maybe a different perspective from which to address the the issues a different angle yeah. to look at it it's mm -hmm. like all right you you've been given a and b and if you're lucky maybe a little bit of c but normally it's just a and b and this goes right back into tribalism but if that's that if that's the only way that you know you're either republican or democrat you're red or blue you're a neocon or you're a progressive liberal that's not what life is guys politics is like nope. a, a little bump on a gnat's ass in my life it means nothing to me, my life is all about looking at the personal philosophy and how do I address these things? How do I look at them? How do I, once I do something, how do I go back and, and be retrospective about it? And when I get retrospective, what tools am I going to use to think about it and say, all right, well, here's where I fucked up and here's where I got it right. Uh, d does that make sense or am I just talking gibberish here? No, it makes, no, sense it makes a lot of sense. I, I've I've noticed that uh, rarely do people ask me personally, either on social media or in real life, what I actually believe. They just take on face what I'm asking them or or saying is what I believe. Um, and this really does help me how, learn. How dare they take what you say is what you believe, Dave? How silly of them. Well, this nah. does help me learn from. This helps me learn what what positions are right or not. Can I defend this position? Is this even a defensible position? Can it logically check out, et cetera, et cetera? This all gets solved when you ask someone, well, what do you really feel about this? What is your real opinion? Like, what is all, like, stop with all of this bullshit and, like, explain to me why this is X, Y, Z. You know, rarely does that happen. And I'm, I'm just backing up what Merrick said here, is no one wants to sit down and explain it Everyone wants to just say, I'm right, nanny, nanny, boo boo. Well, I, I, I personally, I don't believe most people are saying, I'm right. Well, this is the way it is. You have to believe this way. I think most people are just trying to find an outlet because they're, I'm not going to go into the social aspects of it, but I think a lot of people that, that they, li they live very dull lives and, and through social media, it allows them to, to express themselves. So when people post, controversial things on Facebook or, or Twitter or whatever else. Like that's their excitement. Like that's like, that's how they, that's how they, they, they get their juices going is by having these arguments, having these discussions, uh, engaging in people. And, and they, they purposefully post these very controversial things to do that. So those are, square you those, have access to basically. <laughs> that's a great point, Jason. They're living vicariously through their, their, alter egos yeah through the online the, personas yeah they're personas yeah sure yeah and uh i, th I think uh, you're I, spot on like those are the people those are the people that like you were talking about in the pre-show those are the people that really seriously need to get off for three or four days and go sit in the woods and take some mushrooms and go talk to bigfoot <laughs> I, i'm not gonna say i've ever done that but i will say that i highly recommend it <laughs> <laughs> i've never talked to bigfoot yes. I, talk I, to Jesus I think Christ. people do well, not that was, that was need to, answer, uh, never mind. to get anyway sorry go ahead, i Dave. think people do need to realize that they are part of a, an experiment in a botnet basically when they're on social media specifically but even in any forum or even debate circle or anything like that you're in a meta you're in a box of thought and you always have to be able to pull out and look at that and go, is any of this 
does this even have a basis in reality? You know, like, does this even matter? Like, have we been pulled down to some obscure side argument that doesn't even matter? No, I think, I think like Facebook, Facebook in particular, Facebook is the greatest propaganda tool ever created. You can, they, they can, they can spread pop propaganda it's a through psyop, Facebook man. far, far more than they can through the media, uh, through music, through movies, things like that. Like Facebook, people spend, you know, 24, seven, 364, 365, 366 on it all the time. And yeah, but like it, it becomes people's lives. It, it really does become people's lives and they are, they are subjected to so much hate and anger information and, 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 and disinformation and just blatant mm -hmm. lies. And, and it, it's, it's a huge, huge social programming. Uh, and it takes, as we talked about earlier, it takes, it, it's the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain an idea without accepting it. And, and most yep. people do not have educated minds. Well, I think that that's, pretty much spot or want to drop their jimmy jams behind their belief well you know because they have their feels i i don't want to go off into another beleaguered conversation about confirmation bias and the things that we always talk about but really that that's what it distills down to and jason you're exactly right people who are not firm in their convictions once again uh are mm -hmm. always looking for uh, things that back up their biases and that is the perfect platform for social media because it will look at what you're interested in and just start feeding that to you and yeah I don't want to see we, that <laughs> yeah we all know that we, we've seen it a million times uh, you can you can just have a conversation with your cell phone somewhere around you and then you jump on the, the Facebook and you see all these ads that are related to things that you've been talking about and you're like oh okay well that's that's interesting that's that's a whole new level of social engineering I can tell well it's, yeah it's, now, just, it's yeah. just advanced I was, I was just that's gonna so say spooky it's, isn't it, it it's it's, oh. it's it's just advanced because we're talking about this you know about the fact that people live like this and I was thinking back and it's like it maybe not. It, it actually probably was to 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 a similar extent, it just at a different time period. But like you know, when AOL first burst on the scene, I knew plenty of people who lived their lives on there twenty four seven. You know, so this is not exactly. It's not necessarily <laughs> new. It's just the technology has advanced so much that all these other things are added on top of it. I think, and it's just mm -hmm. that plus the you know the the constant nature of well the state to keep the you know that you know what's what's one of the state's main goals to keep the citizenry as docile as possible and what's one of the easiest ways to mm -hmm. do that keep them keep them at each other's throats so they pay right, you uh, less attention and yeah, uh, uh, go ahead I, I just want to jump jump in here real quick for a second jeremy uh storm clouds gathering did a really really great video a couple of years ago it's up on youtube it's called psychology mm -hmm. of power that is a must watch and and it goes perfectly yeah, with what I, you're saying i, I saw that I think I think I remember seeing that at one point, but I'll I'll try to put it in the show notes. Maybe Stormclouds Gathering is a great channel. Watch it again. But yeah, so I don't know. I, I actually cut off Merrick. Merrick was going somewhere, and I jumped in there. So uh, no, I, I was just trying to tie it all all together uh, into a little package there. But you know, we I, I'm a little reticent to keep droning on and on and on about this because we talk about it so much. Uh, well, maybe we do within our circles. I don't think that other normies if you will really spend a lot of time thinking about it they watch their cnn or fox news or msnbc and they and they pick their they pick their team <laughs> and uh you know the what what's the joke that you know it's great with grandpa the little paper clip pops up right you guys have seen that and yeah. says oh i see that uh, you know you're <laughs> going off on a conservative rant here would you like for me to uh enable caps lock and disable <laughs> spell check it, Mm -hmm. And, you know, you always get that angry grandpa email uh, chain letter that's full of discrepancies. that has got like a million forwards behind it and everybody's emails on it and <laughs> and, and everybody's just just hitting the button as hard there. You know, grandpa's just smashing the button. He's angry mm -hmm. about it nah, and this and that. And that that damn Obama's a African, you know, from Africa. And he's, you know. 
he should go back to Somalia. Uh, he's what, a Muslim Kenyan. Yeah, Muslim <laughs> Kenyan. Uh, whatever. Just pick. I mean, he's, he was something, but I don't know if he was a Muslim Kenyan. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. He go was back a... to Kinesia, you bastard. Kinesia. He was a socialist, yeah. and his feet stink. I know for a fact that those two things were that's, true. Yeah, uh, that's I, that's I have, all. That's all entirely true. I have no problem with that one. Um, but uh, but that is the majority of what you're dealing with. Uh, we we get used to doing debate within our own circles, but we're. Oh boy, this is going to sound horribly uh stop mouse pocket uh, arrogant, bro. arrogant. But we tend to think our hyper. way through things. <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to be hyperbolic. Uh, we tend to think our way through things a, a little bit deeper. So when somebody's talking to me, if it's something that I can vehemently and completely uh disagree with, if it's if I find it uh distasteful and ab abhorrent, I will just sit and listen to them until they're done. I know that's hard to believe, but I actually will do that. And instead of just making bullet points in my brain to go, okay, yeah, but what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And naming off 10 different things, that just makes people mad. And like I've just been sitting there, instead of listening to them, I'm making a list of, of refutations. Well, I don't want that. What I want to do is when I dis disagree with all of their points is, yes, I will make bookmarks of where I disagree, but then I'm just going to ask them questions, say, okay, well, there's something I don't understand about this. You're, you're, you're Keynesian, to, to go to uh, Jason's point there, your, your Keynesian point of view, you know, with the, with the broken windows, um, would, it, would it therefore be accurate to say if we just go break more windows, then therefore we would have more prosperity? And, and 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 let them let them paint themselves into a corner <clears throat> and think their own way out of it instead of me placing them there. Just let them do it. There was, <laughs> uh, Merrick. You made me. I, I had to mute, uh, turn my head and laugh for a second. You made me think of this. There was like a Daffy Duck thing where somebody was running around the city throwing dynamite, it was blowing all the windows out. And I was like, th I was thinking of if somebody could put. Paul Krugman's face on that, it would just make my day. But I, I, I don't know what episode or anything it was on. I just. That would yeah. be funny. <laughs> I, I love the videos. I don't know if you guys have seen it there on YouTube. Of uh, It's a, a rap battle between F.A. Hayek and John Maynard. Yes. Gaines. Have you? It, yeah, oh, I've, man. Yeah, that's, I've seen it. That's yeah. gold. There's two of them, right? I think I, I think I don't think I've ever saw. I don't think I've ever actually watched the second one. I think they're going to go for a three. Yeah, there's, watched, a, there's at the, least two. I've seen two. I watched of the first them, one. I think I watched mo part of the second one. I should actually sit back and watch that at some point. Yeah. And and can I? Is it okay if I grab the mic for a second again? Go because right I, I have an analogy no, to throw ahead. in here. Yeah, um, do it. I had a, a friend of mine came over the, the other night, came over to the house. Uh, he's one of my local boat captains. A uh, former, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Iraq veteran, many tours, and so on and so forth. And he's a typical uh, neocon, Israel first, you know, USA, America, hell yeah. You know, you, you step on my flag, I'll pound your ass, that kind of thing. And he came over and he just, yeah, oh yeah, but he's a nice guy. And so he asked, he, he said, I want to come over and talk to you about something very specific. Those guys said, are reasonable. Sure. Um, so we sat down and we cracked open a couple of beers. And he said, I want to talk to you very specifically about Israel. And oh boy, did my face light up. <laughs> Guess what I happen to have a decent amount of information about, sir. Right. Yeah. And, and of course, my computer's uh -oh. closed. I mean, I'm not looking stuff up. I just said, all right, we'll sit around and talk. I did two hours of Middle East history with this guy before we ever even got around to the state of Israel. Now, that was very hard for me to do. I had to dig super deep uh, to pull mm -hmm. it off. But <clears throat> once again, as I always say, we don't want to start the story in the middle, which is where he's at. You know, the history of the world started don't in... Don't debate without know, definitions and don't Yeah, start the history the of the world started in 1949 in, in Israel and or whatever year that was. And then we go from there, and therefore, because X, then therefore Y. And yeah, after a couple of hours, right then I said, okay, now are you ready to get get into Israel and, and how that goes? Because we had to talk about colonialism and, and the wars and everything else. I mean, starting with the Franco-Prussian War and, and moving on forward. Um, and he's like, damn, man, that's hang on, that's a lot to process. And I said, well, okay, good. That's <laughs> fine. Because, uh, no, seriously, because... 
once we have that base established and and then when I'm done, I can ask you, do you or do you not agree with everything that I've said? And if you don't, then let's go back and we'll we'll address that until we're all very uh, firm and, and comfortable with the grammar that we're using and the logic that we're using. Then we can go forward. And so I thought for sure that I would never see this guy again. I thought I'd run him off for good. He called me yesterday. Uh, I was out working on a project in the garage. And he said, hey, man, I'd like to come by and uh, grab a couple of more beers and talk to you a little bit more. Now, <laughs> there's an open mind wow, nice. from a neocon. I mean, a straight up Likudnik, you know, Netanyahu. Definitely don't have him read the protocols. <laughs> Oh, yeah, a combat vet, you know, America first, the whole deal. And this guy still wants to hear more. He's listened to every podcast that we've done. Nice. And That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, all right, you know, we, make sure he listens to, go to back, this one too. <laughs> oh, no, I've turned him on to this one. Absolutely. That was yeah. the first thing I did. Um, but to, to, to bring that back, he is now within my sphere of influence. So he is now somebody that I can sit down with one on one, and I don't care if it changes the way he votes or anything else because I don't vote. I don't give a fuck who does. I think that's dumb. But uh, at least I'm changing the way he's seeing the world around him, and, and I think that that's about the best that we can that we can hope for. And at least he's open to it. And when he gives me a counterpoint, I don't try to counter the counterpoint. I just say, you know what? Yeah, that's a that's a pretty common uh, take on things, and let's address that. Let's take a let's take a look at it. You know, let's take a scalpel to that idea and really slice it open, and and figure out whether that's viable or not. So I don't know. Anyway, sorry for the tangent, but I just think that with within the level of discourse that we have, that's kind of a better way to address things well, than I to just attack people, unless you're just doing it for fun. Well, of course, and I, I agree, and I, I think not only is it a good example, you know, of what you've been talking about, but also, you know, something is, was mentioned a couple of times earlier about, you know, the difference between doing it on social media versus doing it face to face, because you're already, you know, you're already in a more, you know, not only a more natural setting, but you're in a more relaxed setting because you're sitting back and you know having a couple of beers, so you're just in a naturally, you know, naturally in a relax, more relaxed setting. So you're going to be able to have a much more civil conversation to start with, you know, versus trying to do something like that. Like if even if somebody of you know in a similar position came up to you online, it's it's not always as easy to communicate those things through text which is, you know, I think always causes a lot more problems than a lot of people want to give credit to just like the, the misunderstandings people have that cause they cause these insane riffs. fights. Yeah. Yeah. Riffs and all this stuff. And just, it causes fighting that isn't necessary, which also gets to something that was mentioned, I think by Jason earlier too, the talking about the side issues too much. That's what, that's how people end up getting stuck on these side issues a lot that the, the ones that aren't necessarily, uh, going to have and the biggest impact in the long run. The you know smallest amount of people in the world that agree on the non-aggression principle. You know, it just to me, it, opinion squabblings aren't really that. They shouldn't make or break friendships. What should make or break friendship is if someone goes, "Yeah, I, I'm I support someone aggressing against you," or "I I would aggress against you." Yeah, all right. Well, we can't be friends. Toodles. So it's pretty simple. <laughs> self created echo chamber right there um yeah having a difference of opinion as as long as that opinion isn't hurting you right i mean as we, as we know opinions yeah. don't hurt you but like as long as that person's not like Speak wearing a badge yourself, and, and expressing his opinion on you in a physical manner it's just a freaking opinion right it's this is facebook guys all right this is social media it's you're talking to people tens of hundreds thousands of miles away through an electronic device you have no physical connection to this person you're never going to see this person you'll probably never talk to them ever in in real life why are you taking it so hard like why why are you getting so upset at a at ones and zeros on on a screen being transferred through a, a fiber optic cable from a thousand miles away like why why do you allow yourself to be so controlled emotionally mentally and even to an extent physically by someone mm -hmm. else's opinion 
that you will never, ever, 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 ever interact with in real life. It, it, it baffles me that people take Facebook that seriously. Well, I think it's no. kind of insane, but I also I, I think we all, I think we actually even we we answer the we answered that question earlier because it's the it's the fact that so many people actually live that vi- that vicarious life true, through true, their so, you know through their social media avatars essentially, and you know it's like yeah. one it's like one giant warped version of The Sims, and uh, that's how most people live their <laughs> lives now. You know, like. All right. Fa- I'm a, Facebook I'm a is same, the worst game the ever. Dude. It really that's, is. <laughs> that's a very good analogy, actually. <laughs> I can, I can. Or, or, I like, the, the I guess maybe online. Second Life too. I never played that, but Jim Jesus always talks about it. But I'm, I mean, I'm sure a lot of that is thrown in here too. And it's just like that's how everybody lives, you know. Like most people really do. I mean, I've talked about it before. I most of my interactions with people are are through social media and different mediums because I don't have a lot of people around here. So I, I well, kind of have I've, to do that. At the I've current met point. Merrick in real life. He acts the same way on life in life well, as he does online. You're not getting a fake Ver- Merrick Van Landingham. Some people are so genuine, it's, it's Dave. Really... Most people aren't. You know, I'm I'm pretty sure if you ask, like, say Jen, she'd pretty much tell you that the person you hear here on the podcast is definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Brett, that Brett Paisley song, so much cooler online. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, go, it's going through my head right now. <laughs> The, have you ever seen the video for that? I don't watch a lot of music videos. Yeah, but I with, have J- seen that. with Jason Alexander. Yes. <laughs> and uh, um, what's the other? Maureen McCormick. Yeah. 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 That is, that's a pretty funny. Well, it's a good uh, one. Yeah. You know, to 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 run this back around in the circle. Uh, today I saw a mutual friend of ours. Uh, I'll leave him unnamed out of privacy, but has a uh, his significant other has uh, cancer. And uh, yeah, is right, and is having some issues. And and there's something that I I started thinking about and started saying publicly, probably within the last year, is that because as you guys know, and and most people probably who are listening to this, I've had a very rough year <laughs> with with illness and injury. It's you grow it's two inches fa- on your tick. Stop falling down, Merrick. Yeah, 2017 <laughs> has been pretty hard on me. Um, but you know, I'm bouncing back and, and, and I, I had a lot of time this year to just really sit and think about it. And I said, well, I always talk about perspective and about perception, but what does that really mean? Well, what that means to me is, and this is what I told our friend, uh, who's going through a rough time. I said, look, the way I see it is that life for all of us is very finite. And, you know, we're all headed towards that proverbial brick wall. We're on that bullet train and we don't know where it is. Uh, And I've said this many times. This is not going to come as a surprise to anybody. Um, Mm -hmm. But life is very short and it's very difficult and it's mostly very confusing because about the time that we start figuring it all out is when we take that celestial dirt nap, right? it's it's over you know but you're 70 years old and you're like oh i finally fucking get it (laughs) 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 so so my take on it is why are you taking yourself so seriously when you could be having a great time you could be having a lot of fun even with people you disagree with just battling back and forth and trying to distill it down trying to figure it out Exactly. And we can all have a good time doing it. And at the end of the day, whether you agree with me or not, when you walk away from my garage, uh, it doesn't matter whether you agree with me or not. It's just that we had a great time doing it. We smoked a cigar. We grabbed a couple of beers. We had a great fucking, you know, old school Beastie Boys, Beastie Boys style. Can't talk. Uh, uh, you know, battle royale. The, this is the latency for my brain injury, guys. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I still stumble. Um, and and we both come out better for it. It's it's the old saying of the a rising tide lifts all ships. Well, we can rise the tide and we can lift the ships. And and even if we don't agree on it, we we walk away with things that like, ah, shit, man, I'm going to have to think about that because I, I never looked at it that way. And that's what I'm always after when I'm talking to people is. To, to get them to walk away from me with the idea that, ah, shit, I never thought about it that way. 
And they can go and they can make out of that whatever in the hell they want to. Whether they come up with the same conclusions I did or not really is irrelevant to me. It's just that they took the time to sit down and do it. And, and mm-hmm. that's how you enrich your life. So anyway, sorry, I'm passing the mic back. Well, that's quite no. right. I get I get animated sometimes. <laughs> I I like it. Get animated more. I never do that. Uh, and, <laughs> and another I, thing. Yeah. You know, no, uh, I'm sorry. And, I, I I agree, Merrick. It's there. It's 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 an entirely different discussion when you're having it in person versus you know ver, ver, through an electronic device like this because there's no. Uh, there's no context, right? You you can't tell s- sarcasm. You can't look in somebody in the Inflection. eye. You can't, you 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 can't have any sort of emotion in in a, in a in a message on you know on social media. But talking to a person and per- talking to a, a person like, you know, in in real life, it's like that's that's how my my brother and I did it. Uh, my brother got back from from the army. He did a couple tours in Iraq. Uh, survived a couple I- IEDs. He he's a little messed up. Uh, but him and I would just sit and talk and have beers until two, three, four o'clock in the morning, uh, and just talk about everything. Like he came, he came back from the war as a diehard George Bush, New Kamal, uh, uh, conservative, and now he's an anarchist. Like he's he's an ex-military anarchist, and and mm-hmm. talking to him, talking to him is how I learned that I was an actual anarchist and not just like a, a Ron Paul libertarian that I had been. Claiming to be, uh, so so yeah. Get get off the of social media and talk to people. You will find out that people yeah. are not as fucked up in the real world as they are on Facebook. And it's much more fulfilling w- when you do that in person. Uh, when when they see, as you said, your facial expressions, you see theirs. Uh, there's those awkward pauses and the looks and the you know. Where you kind of it's, uh, it's uh, a glancing. Lot, it's perso- yeah, it's a lot more personal. It's right. very intimate. Yeah, or, or even it's very intimate, and, and it puts the humanity back into the discourse. Uh, people are a lot more nicer than they are online as well. Oh, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Cyber balls is a real thing. <laughs> Beer balls, cyber balls, cyber just, balls is a real I thing. I just play a heel online. I just play a, a mean, a mean asshole online. That's it. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that, Dave. I, that's, that's you know, in real life, I'm such a nice, you know, I'm just a nice dude. I just, I don't. You got to, you got to, let. You got to start. You got to start ending your your comments to people with "woo," like a Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! There you go. That was well, a good one. I, I enjoyed the discourse a lot, and I enjoyed you know, debate. You know. Well, well, Dave, you and I have hung out, you know, more than once. And and mm-hmm. same with Andre, you know, so we you know each other personally. And I love a heated debate as long as it never devolves into something personal. You know, when you the oh, first yeah. one to throw out the ad hominem loses. Mm, because, yeah, that's how I play. <laughs> because a lot of times, no, this is serious. A lot of times I will take the devil's advocate position just for the sake of having somebody in the room to do it. You know, somebody's mm-hmm. got to be goddamn Bernie Sanders. So yeah. I'll do, I'll do that. I mean, and, 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 but I won't let you I gotta, know. I got a, I got a sack of potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to somebody got to be the, Ugh. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the new, uh, the new diet plan for, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> but I'll take that devil's advocate position just for the sake of having something to argue about. But instead of saying, all right, I'm going to do this, I'll just do it. And you're like, oh, my God, this guy's wrecked, man. He's oh. fucked up. What's going What's going on with this guy? Well, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. It, you know, it, once again, if you're firm in your conviction, convictions, you should be able to argue your point intelligently and, and refute my mm-hmm. points. And then we can have a very spirited debate. <clears throat> we can have a lot of fun doing it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And at the end of the day, then we can say, well, yeah, I was just playing the devil's advocate, but you know, th- this is what we drew out of all of that. You know, we separated the wheat mm-hmm. from the chaff. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah you nailed it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's fun to do. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I hijacked the whole show just to go off on the, the science of discourse, but I guess that's what happens. Who, who well, the hell knows? Well, no, see, I, that actually, that, that, that brings me back to a point I was going to raise earlier that, uh, you know, we were talking about certain people 
are, are like, you know, they seem to be, they, they would rather be, you know, on the, they would rather be online where there's that anonymity and it's that certain level of anonymity and they can, you know, and the distance and they can say all these things that they wouldn't say in person and that they, that they exist and maybe it's not even worth trying to engage with them. But, but, uh, and, and you also mentioned the fact that, you know, you didn't want to talk about this necessarily to, to death. And it's like, I was thinking at the time, I was like, well, no, actually, because the main purpose of this show in particular was supposed to be to reach people like that. And this is the exact message that needs to reach them. <laughs> so this is the perfect place to have this conversation. You know, I had, you know, debating it over and over again in the echo chambers is, is, is one thing I get, I get that, but being able to do it here is I'm sure I, desires, but you know, like, I think it's the most yeah, beneficial. It's, normal it's, people don't want to debate, man. No, they I can't agree even with keep that. It in track in their mind. Most people can't keep five or six points in their mind, hold it together, then make a counterpoint to another person's point. Or they can't keep a, a regular debate in their head. They get lost down on the, the the goalpost moves that they want to keep making because they don't have a point. So you you have to try to avoid debate, man. It's hard, but yeah, I you am, got to. I'm I am not a fan of debate at all. I I do not enjoy it. Um, I do not enjoy. Being told to move to Somalia and being called a liberal and all those other things. Yeah, but those uh, aren't. The, that's, me, not, that's not debate, though. Like I was, I was gonna say, when I when I hear that, I'm like, I like debate. Like I, an actual like debating. No, I, I I like that. I'll do that. I'll do that all the day long. I don't like what passes me, for debate. <laughs> give me a discussion. Ar arguing, right? Give me give me a discussion. Give me someone that has an open mind that is willing to learn. Uh, that has a that has counterpoints. I'll I'll do that all day long. I love doing that. Jason, can I ask you a question just for clarification? Sure, what's up? What's How up, would you Matt? delineate the difference between discussion and debate? Uh, discussion and debate. Uh, a discussion, right? You have you have point counterpoint. You have um, you have information going back and forth, right? Whereas a debate, you're trying to prove yourself correct. You're trying to prove the, the other winner. person wrong. You're not well, the, pos the position. You're not that correct. You're, you're not there to learn. You're not there to. Um, to, to engage in ideas, what you're trying to do in a debate is to prove more intelligent or to have a correct uh, position as opposed to the other person. Okay. Right. Where <laughs> a, 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 dis a discussion is about education, a debate is about right or wrong I, I, or, or <clears throat> superiority. Okay. That, that's what I was kind of thinking. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm doing chores as I'm <laughs> talking here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> don't, don't, geez, don't let it, don't let discussion us interrupt is like, you. Hey, let's right, talk go, about go right this. The debate choice. is like at the end of this, uh, well, somebody's well, well, being well, proven wrong. Yeah. Well, well no, that, that, I think that that's where I was kind of falling off on it because the way I see it is I don't necessarily delineate that much between discussion and debate. Uh, point counterpoint is, is fine with me. Uh, I don't I don't say, well, if you disagree with me now, it's not a discussion. Now it's a debate. And so what we're talking about is just a difference of grammar, uh, essentially. But because when you said you don't like debate, I'm like, well, OK, uh, you know, that's <laughs> something that I really enjoy doing. But I I don't it's a, I, I think that it's a multi you, the, the way that you word. described it is I just was, don't think most people are well equipped for debate is all that's well, what I'm thinking. the way he was describing it is one is one is discussion and one is argumentation. Uh, and, okay. And, Ar arg argumentation is probably a better word than debate, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, uh, okay. Uh, for, and, and, for for my vocabulary, yeah. Sure. And, and that's fine. That's why I take the step back to make sure that we have our, we're talking on the same terms because otherwise we end up you know, this is debate. We, we're going to end up arguing about something that we don't disagree on just because we didn't get the terminology right. Oh, which takes me to the, to my next point. <clears throat> um, <laughs> that, that <laughs> Oh, don't you love the way I do this? Um, that's another hmm. big failure uh, in my view of the way that people don't get how to have discourse be it online or in person or anything else, because they don't take the time to establish the grammar. I may be using yeah. a term. Okay, let me give you an, a, a, a very poor analogy here. I identify as a liberal. Okay, now I, well, I can a liberal? <laughs> feel I can feel everybody's hair on the back of their neck just standing up straight. Okay, but how dare you? Who we let, haven't defined. Who fell that. asleep at the gate and let this heathen in? 
Right. <laughs> I identify as a liberal, but uh, you fire up the uh, helicopter. Right. Let's Kick him off with of this fiend phone trademark pinning server Where's right Pinochet? now. Where's Pinochet? Okay, but if we if we would stop right there, I'm going to hit the pause button and we, and we say, okay, well, before we start throwing people out of helicopters, let's define that grammar. Uh, when I say the word liberal, what do 99% of the, the world, what are they going to think? Well, they're going to think Nancy Pelosi and Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and this political, uh, politicized, uh, per, uh, leftist, progressive. Democrat. Bernie Sanders, I need half of your shit. But what if I'm using the term as it was meant 100 years ago, a classical liberal, laissez-faire, liberal, leave you alone, the, the, we can, you know, the whole non-aggression principle. Guys, I'm a fucking anarchist, okay? A true, hardcore, <laughs> no excuses, absolutist anarchist. But I still identify as a liberal, but a classical liberal. So if we didn't, if we don't take the time to identify that that term, the the grammar, then we're going to start well, arguing about things that we don't disagree on. That that's that's most, my point. Most people, Merrick, have never been taught that when two people are voluntarily engaging e each other in discussion, they're contracting. And words only have meaning once they've been agreed upon within the contract. So we 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 hit a thing where people just want to skip they want to skip to the middle of the contract like we were talking about earlier skip into the middle they don't want to build that foundation of defining things so the actual contract makes sense if everything's on a contract has no definitions when there is a point of contention then they make no sense and when there is a point of contention which is most of the time a semantical thing everyone's confused on what the wording means if there's no agreeance upon the definitions, there's no debate. You're not even debating. You're both essentially just trying to drive memes in each other's heads. Yeah, well, that's why I was busting your balls the other day about being pedantic. Uh, and Dave, I don't even remember what no. the yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember what the word was. But you know, and you're you're well, I'm using very pedantic. You're using uh, you know, Is hey, if you think this then therefore that and i said hey man there's no need to be pedantic because what you're doing is and i don't even like i said i don't remember what the situation was but you you were using the connotation of that word whatever it was against the denotation of that word and, and that's where people run into trouble and i wasn't picking on you i was just i was just having fun with it but um you know a lot when, of times when, i lose track of what's going on and just hit the knee-jerk response i i i I can't remember what goes on half the time. I no, I don't, I don't even don't know what it was either. That. But that is that is the problem Not that people all. run into is that they're <laughs> they're so knee jerk. That's a great term. They're so knee jerk and they're so reflexive about their positions that if you use the wrong word, then they're just going to jump on you based on that word. I remember getting into it about a very fundamental issue a while back with uh, with a lady who was a very educated lady, a PhD. And when I use the word actor, okay, so, and you guys know me, I, I, I talk and I write and I do things. Like a state I, I like actor. words. Yeah, and so I was talking about a group of people as the actors because that is the correct term, the most accurate term. And she thought, oh, it was the uh, one of the mass shootings. And the only way she mm -hmm. could see it is she thought I meant that they were like paid actors. Oh, <laughs> Even after I just no. you're right. Yeah, I know. Go ahead and laugh. Even after I described him like, no, hang on, lady. Wait a minute. You're, you're the doctor here. You should understand words mean things. Most people don't know what <laughs> we mean when we say state. They have no clue what. No, the they're state thinking means. like, what are you talking about? Alabama, you Florida, you <laughs> Illinois. Yeah. What, what, which state are you talking about? North Korea is not a state. <laughs> we only got 50 states. North Korea is not one of them. The, that's where oh it, it falls gosh. apart. Yeah, you're right. So. They don't even know what the state is. You're trying to have a debate on and call them a status and everything. It's like, no, hold on. Do you know what the state is? No, then we need to figure out well, what again, it is. That's why it's the, the debate. Debate is debate is pointless in those situations. Discussion is what you should strive for. Is uh, you know what we were talking about earlier. I guess because I, I got you know I I agree with what Jason was saying before because I do see that different. Although for me. Debate is like I said. I I find debate enjoyable, but I also find it to be a much more structured thing if you're actually going to debate somebody. But you know, anyway, 
yeah i i just i i think that uh it's people pe- people don't people you know going back to what we've said before already i mean people don't people don't want to do this so that's why you know if you can if you can engage people in in public in person rather i was gonna say in public well it can be a public it can be a private too it doesn't really matter but as long as it's in person uh you have a much better chance of doing this and i i think that i i, I really need to get doing more of that obviously not around here i think i've kind of wor- worn out my welcome here in new york i don't know but uh, once i finally get out of you this think? place once i finally get out of that out of this place I, I i intend to be more sociable as it were and uh you know at least try to get ideas out there because that, that is the only thing we can really do right you know can't can't really force people can uh no uh, absolutely well, not and we and you, we don't want to we don't want to use force uh, i'm sorry i'm uh, just one real quick thing for jeremy Going back to the grammar, yeah, d- discussion, debate. It, you, the discussion is always better than the, the debate, but the grammar is still important in either one because, I mean, you could use an errant word oh, maybe absolutely. taken out of context. Let's say uh, parasite. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and and everything blows out of control just because they never got the grammar. And, and that was really the only point that I was trying to make. And I'm sorry, that was a cheap shot, Jeremy. But That's hey, fine. man, lo- low hanging fruit, man. Hey, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and, uh, unfortunately, I guess oh, I walked right boy. into that. You know, so. <laughs> Paris that really pisses people off. But, yeah. but that is a that is a great analogy, Jeremy. Your case is a very great analogy for exactly what we're talking about. Of of it's us and them. It's tribalism. It's it's loss of grammar. It's loss of context that blows up into something because and it shouldn't be like this on opinion yeah i know it should be on this when the person's like i'm going to kill you and rape you and take everything but it's 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 but this ties right into what jason was talking about of living vicariously because now they have a point of contention where they can ignore the grammar and the context and everything else and now they have something to latch on to that they can go viral with and, and or well, I say viral, not in the sense of it going all over the place, but viral like a damn dog and just go nuts on, on something. And that becomes their pet case for the next, you know, however many months. And yeah. I just think it's destructive. I think it's destructive to your mind, to your ability to think when you do things that way. Oh, yeah. People. Way too many people have emotional responses to logical issues. I think I think that's yep. a that's that's a big deal or, or, or a big um, contributor to the, to the divisiveness that we are experiencing. That started off the whole conversation. I can't disagree with that at all. <laughs> uh, it's 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 the late it's intellectual laziness. It's the so, lack of will to think your way through it. To, to just say, wait a minute, before I make up my opinion. So how do we get people out of this, this mode, though? <clears throat> how do we get people out of this okay. mode, Merrick? How of, much time do you have, you Dave? Know? <laughs> uh, we've, well, we're already because going. Because this is a very hour, long discussion. So, I mean, yeah. well, I mean, we can keep talking after this, what's but what's we should your... probably wrap the show up soon. So maybe give us the short version now. Maybe we can <laughs> you give us the long version of Patreon also short short How do we get people out of this defensive debate mode? On, on okay. Facebook, because let me give you the Reader's uh, Digest just, version. Okay, give me the TLDR. Uh, the, I'll give you the I'll give you the TLDR, the elevator speech. Um, it starts with education, and and the problem we have is we have government education, compulsory Prussian style government education, which I have talked about ad nauseum. Um, mm-hmm. And the problem with that is not uh, all of the indoctrination aside. The problem with that is is that we never teach people how to think. Critically nope. thinking. No, nope. yep. I, I agree completely. I, I often tell people that I believe that the greatest thing that we can do for our children, for society, for the world as a whole, is to homeschool and to get them out of coercive education. Amen, um, my brother. Just and I get an if, amen. if you don't want to hear any argument about this other than the fucking math behind it, because Merrick and Jason are right on this. Socialism cannot price things correctly. So you're putting your kids in a model that isn't being priced correctly. Plain and simple. Well, not, not, not only that, not only being all the way not around. Only that, but kids in coercive schooling are not taught what to think or not taught not taught how to think. They're taught what, what to think. think. They're taught they're taught how to fill out little bubbles on scantrons and to copy and paste answers out of the back of the book. They're not taught <laughs> to open their minds and to explore and to research and to actually 
exercise that gray matter between their ears. Instead, they're taught how to be robots, you know, like George, like George Carlin said, uh, I'm going to butcher the butcher the crap out of his quote here, but he says something to the effect of they don't want you to be smart and intelligent. They want you to be just smart enough to push buttons. Well, that right? was the I mean, whole that was the whole deal behind uh, Horace Mann in 1850 when he came back from Prussia to, to Massachusetts. He's like, hey, we can create perfect workers right here. Uh, mm -hmm. Limited thinkers, uh, good order takers. Which, of course, we know that the Prussians and the Germans are very good at, at, at establishing that. that and, and, and we've done yeah. shows and shows on this, so I'm not going to beleaguer that point, but that's exactly what it is. And, and but, but what I'm talking about, just engaging in people like as of a thing, like not what, we can, what can we do in the future, but like when you feel someone's only wanting a debate, what do you just say? Hey, I'm not looking for a debate here. I, I just want to have a discussion. Like, what do you? No, the way you like, do I get it is that you listen, we, we've got you to, listen to their points, and then but... you start asking them questions. Oh, yeah. You, you, you I, ask well, I do that, you, and it you pisses find, everybody you find off, that, so I don't know. You find that keystone. That's what it is. You, you try That's to, you exactly try to right. break things down. You find that keystone issue, and then you build on it from there. Well, that's yeah. exactly right. That uh, something that uh, Michael uses all the time, a little catchphrase that I first learned about when I was in college back in the the '90s. Uh, I am intrigued by your ideas and wish to subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs> well, I mean, that's an old it's an old joke, but really, when you when you're entertaining somebody in either a debate or a discussion or argumentation or whatever you want to call it, that's how you do it. You you have to go to that common ground. And then just, yeah. you know, be, I hate to say be Socratic because that's really not what it is, but centrally just ask questions and get them to dig themselves down into the rabbit hole until they're, op they're, they're starting to question. Maybe they can't describe it quite the way they want to. And oh, I'm not as good on this as I thought I was. And then now you're open to say, well, I get that, but what about this? And then you've opened the door, and then you, and then you listen. Then you shut the fuck up, which is something I'm not good at. But then you just shut the hell up and and listen. <clears throat> I'm not it's, good at that it, either. Like the, you you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? Well, you can lead a person to knowledge, but you can't make them think, right? So what you can do is to put the information in front of them, and mm -hmm. entice them a little bit. You're you right, know, wave wave the little bit of information in front of them and hope that they bite and, and, and nibble and, and to actually take the 34 seconds. Not everyone's going to buy what you're selling. No. And if well, you act yeah. aggressively, nobody's going to buy what you're selling. That's exactly right. Think about the preacher standing on the street corner with the Bible held over his head, you know, screaming at you. You're going to hell. Oh, you go to hell. Burn in the fire. Go yeah. to hell. Uh, who's listening to that guy? No, we don't listen to that guy. We, we laugh at that guy. <clears throat> but you know we can go we back call to that we call that guy crazy like yeah we, we call him cry him as a society I think well even crazy. even the guy with a sign that says the end of ne is near or whatever you know like everyone's just like what is that guy talking about the no that's vermin near. supreme he's cool um <laughs> that, no sorry that was a joke uh, i'm still waiting on my pony <laughs> i want free ponies and toothbrushes uh but no and and we can go back what to the old Latin phrase real quick here of park. <laughs> Thank you. Of of the dental uh, health qui, of a nation is of utmost importance. Qui bono? Who benefits? So if you're debating with somebody, if they see that you're trying to win because the benefit is that you win, then they're less likely to listen to you. But if they see that mm -hmm. you're disinterested in winning, they're much more likely to open their mind up to some different ideas that you may present that they haven't thought about because you really don't care whether they accept them or not. You know, once again, being very Aristotelian, you know, the, the, the mark of an educated mind. And I just find it a much more pleasant way to do things and more effective. And what I found is that people that I do that with and I express my ideas, I don't try to sell them. I just express them as, as uh, coherently and articulately as I can, will come back to me just like this Iraq veteran down the road. It may be months down the road, but will come back to me and say, uh, you know, I am intrigued by your ideas and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. Well, OK, fine. Now we're making progress. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the that's the seed of liberty right there. I mean, that's the the planted seed. It's 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 starting to grow, and now they're asking for more water and more sunlight, and 
more, I don't want to say manure because your opinion's not manure, but you know what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, what is the seed of liberty of which you speak? I am intrigued by your, oh, never mind. <laughs> he said the show's name in the show. Hey, some people got to be the seed. Some people got to be the That was a hat trick, man. I love that. That's great. All right. On that note, I think we should get wrapping up. Uh, but first of all, thank you both for again for joining us. This this has been a, a lot of fun. And do either of you have anything else to say in closing? Jason, we'll start with you first before Merrick takes over again. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I I'll, <laughs> the only thing only thing that I, I wanted to say when when Merrick was talking is that um, uh, the coercive schooling is is terrible. I mean, I can't. There's there's not enough words in the dictionary that I know. To describe how terrible that course of schooling is is on our kids, yeah. our our education. On it's worse than the no education. You know, schooling and education are completely different things, guys. Um, and and mm-hmm. go read John Taylor Gatto. Uh, go read Dumbing Us Down. Uh, hit me up. I have a, P- a free PDF link to it. Um, I'll gladly send it to you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Before Merrick goes, I want to read something that Nima Vodati said on my page just now. I just it's so it's a great quote. I wanted to end the show with it. It says, we should promote every government relinquishment of power ever and always, no matter how small, in any order whatsoever. And I agree with him. Yeah, that'll be a short list. (laughs) True that. (laughs) All right. Uh, Merrick, anything else before we close out? Uh, No, I'll be brief. I'll I'll just start uh, with an apology to all of you for hijacking your show. (laughs) I was just kidding, man. That's why you're here. I do. You guys know me. It's what I do. Give me the night off, Jason. Especially to you. I'm sorry that I I just took over, but I get I get all animated. Hey, it was my pleasure. It was honestly my pleasure. This is the first one I've done with you. First time I've ever talked to you. Oh, that's Uh, right. It was was my pleasure. Oh well, well, it's always. I didn't even realize that. I look forward to I look forward to uh, to being on with you again, and I promise next time I won't talk so much. But uh, no, that's that's all I've got. And the, I'd like oh, to play one some more thing. On that. The, yeah, <laughs> I got a few satoshis in my pocket. Um, the podcast will be back. I promise, guys. It's just been a rough oh. year, and it, when you go through six months where you can't actually talk, it's kind of hard to do a podcast. I, so I got I'm tired of wringing my hands over here, Merrick. I'm waiting for it. All right. Well, it'll happen. So that's all I get. All right. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you guys again. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, this has been the Season of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. Uh, Patreon still up and running. And thank you for everybody who has continued to donate to us. There will be another episode out this week. And all of our other stuff, all of our crypto addresses uh, can be found on our through our website, unfortunately, Paul still hasn't set that up. Although we did, we did finally fix the Amazon link problem, so there is the Amazon link there. So again, that's the easiest way. Everybody, please, 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 especially when you're doing your holiday shopping, anybody who still hasn't finished yet, please consider using our Amazon link when you do so, so that we can uh, get a little kickback and uh, you know help keep the lights on. Anyway, yep. so, so again, see the Liberty Podcast. Thank you, everybody. Catch you next time. Peace. 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 Peace and a better Are you sick of seeing peaceful people being locked away for victimless crimes? Instead of trying to get out of jury duty, consider taking it so you can do the right thing. A single juror with a conscience can send someone home to their family instead of to a jail cell. If there's no victim, how can there be a crime? And if the judge or prosecutor are keeping you in the dark, what are they trying to hide? You can vote your conscience instead of being a pawn of the state. 
For more information, Google jury nullification or check out the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your